America's evil genius, Travis Cook, with you once again. And just for a real quick no frills video, because I wanted to address something that's been making the rounds today on a Wednesday, February the 3rd, regarding Ted Cruz and the Iowa caucus. And I'm hearing all kinds of people talk about how Ted Cruz engaged in voter fraud and he cheated and he stole the Iowa caucus. And I'm hearing all kinds of people go uh, absolutely bat spit crazy over it. And uh, I think a lot of what's going on stems from a uh, genuine misunderstanding of the caucus process and exactly what went on in Iowa and what will go on in several other states between now and the general election. And uh, I can empathize with that to, to a certain degree because let's face it, when we went through our junior high civics course or our high school social studies class, there really never was a lesson on the caucus process. So it is something a lot of us are unfamiliar with. And so that's why some of the things can happen. People look at them and go, wait, that doesn't seem right. Well, it does if you understand the caucus process. Okay, first things first. A primary and a caucus are not the same thing. And I'm going to go through today and tell you in a very brief way the difference between a primary and a caucus and why Ted Cruz did not cheat, why there was no voter fraud, and why everything that happened in Iowa is just part and parcel of what is supposed to happen. Okay, as, as I said, a primary and a caucus are not the same thing. It can be understood why you might think that they are, because anytime you hear a news story about it, you hear a news story talking about the South Carolina primary and the Iowa caucus in the same sentence, and they kind of kind of talk about them like they're almost interchangeable things, like maybe it's just a difference in name or a slight difference in, in process. Nothing can be further from the truth. A primary and a caucus are very, very different things. First of all, a primary, for those of you who live in the states that have those, a primary works well, like pretty much any other election. You go to your uh, go to your, your voting place, the place you vote at, uh, your polling place, you pick up a ballot, you fill it out, you put it in the ballot box, you leave. That's it. It's done. No one in the, in the uh, polling place is going to look at your ballot and know who you voted for. Nobody in the polling place is going to try to confront you or corner you and ask you who you voted for or try to convince you to vote for somebody else. In essence, a primary is a very uh, private kind of endeavor. You come in, you do your deed, you leave. That's it. Easy enough, right? Okay, a caucus is almost the exact opposite of that. When you go to a caucus, you will be in a building or a room with a number of other people locally. And uh, you will not have anything like a, a secret ballot, okay? Instead, who you support will be publicly stated. It might be by a show of hands. It might be by an audible uh, yay or nay. You know, it could be in a number of ways. But in, the bottom line is, everybody in that room will know who you support, and you will know who everybody else in that room supports. There's very much a social element to a caucus that does not exist in a primary. And it can be easily assumed and rightfully assumed that those states who have chosen the caucus system wish to have a system in which that social element is present. Whether you like it or don't like it or disagree with it or agree with it, that's what some states have chosen, okay? So in that caucus process, there's very much a lot of situations where caucus goers will talk and give speeches and interact with each other and so forth, and it may very well be that a caucus goer who supports a different candidate than you will come up to you and try to convince you to abandon your candidate and go with theirs. Or you might do the same thing to another caucus goer. That's kind of the point. It's supposed to be a social situation where the locals get together and determine who they're going to support. That's the point. So for example, you could go to a caucus and uh, be there to vote for candidate A, and someone who supports candidate B across the room could come over to you and say, hey, you know, your, your candidate is not terribly viable. He doesn't have very many votes. But candidate B over here is, is fairly close to where candidate A is. But it's candidate C over there we got to worry about. So why don't you come with us and help us be candidate C and, and then we'll all move forward together. You can choose to go with them. You can choose not to. It's up to you. But that's what a caucus is. That's how it's supposed to operate. Okay? So that's how it worked. The idea of it's not a secret ballot. People get to convince you to try to vote for other people. That's, that's what you do at a caucus, okay? But what about the lie that, that Ben Carson was going to get out of the race? What about Ted Cruz's supporters spreading that lie in order to get his supporters to come over to him? Well, what a lot of people haven't realized, although the video's out there and you can go find it easily on YouTube, 
CNN had reported that story of the impending uh, vacation or the impending dropping out of Ben Carson 15 minutes before the Iowa caucuses started. So that information was already out there. That information was in the atmosphere. In other words, it was fair game for Ted Cruz supporters who were aware of that CNN report to potentially use that as a factor, use that as a reason to try and convince Carson supporters or whoever else to join with them. It was fair game. In other words, it was what normally happens at a caucus. Now, as it turns out, that story was not true. And if you take issue with the fact that story was not true, hey, don't blame Cruz supporters. Go blame CNN. They reported it. And it wouldn't be the first time CNN has got something wrong, that's for sure. So no, there was no voter fraud engaged in. I, I'm not aware of any state laws. And of course, every, every uh, state's caucus has slightly different rules. But I'm not aware of any rules or laws that force a caucus goer to uh, double check and verify any piece of information he uses to try and convince another caucus goer to switch. I don't know about that. I, I've never heard of that. In other words, it's just another social interaction with people and it takes on the same uh, the same caveats as any other social interaction among human beings. People are going to try to convince each other to come over to their side, however they got to do it, and that's what it's all about. Now, if you don't like the caucus system, hey, I can understand that. I'm not a big fan of it either. But the bottom line is that every state that has a caucus, everybody knows the rules going into it, at least in terms of the candidates and the parties, they all agreed to it. So you can't really get mad when the process doesn't work for you. You agree to the process. Likewise, with the on the Democratic side, the Bernie Sanders supporters so mad about coin tosses uh, determining Hillary's victory in some in some precincts. And I don't I don't give a rip what happens over there. I don't care for Hillary or Bernie either one. I don't have a preference for who wins. I, I'd like to smack both of them in the mouth. But the bottom line is there is a tie-breaking procedure in caucuses and evidently it came up. Bernie and his people agreed to that beforehand too. You can't complain when it actually happens. Okay, thanks for giving me the chance to give you that little explanation, that little uh, bit of education. I know we're going to have a lot of uh, partisan fights over the next few months. We're going to have a lot of debates over substantive issues, and that's great. But if you're going to accuse someone of chicanery, accuse someone of lying, accuse someone of manipulating the process, at least understand the process that you're accusing them of manipulating and uh, engaging in chicanery in the first place, will you? Be sure to listen to my radio show every Tuesday afternoon on truthfrequencyradio.com. 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon. The America's Evil Genius Program. Every Tuesday afternoon, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, noon on the West Coast. It's your home for eye gouging, crotch kicking, no holds barred, political commentary. We will see you then on Truth Frequency Radio. This is Travis Cook, America's Evil Genius.